Hey guys, it's Roland. Welcome back to another Brilliant or Blunder. Thank you guys so much for the great feedback from the first episode. Uh, I read all your comments and we'll be working towards incorporating all the feedback in future videos. Uh, so first, I'm trying this new voiceover style, so I'm no longer recording the audio live. Um, and hopefully this will fix any volume issues and it'll make the whole video seem more cleanly edited. The other thing is I want to show more gameplay. I'm still not going to show the entire games just because I want this series to focus on shorter clips in the moment. Um, so there will be jumping around. Hope you guys can bear with that. Um, lastly, as always, remember these judgments are based on decision making and not on your mechanical skills. So I'm not going to be considering any like missed basic attacks or abilities. But yeah, let's jump into it. So the context for this first one, as you just saw, is Dreamwitch got the first chair, and looks like a batter is going to rescue. So for this first one, I'm going to try to make it a little bit easier by telling you exactly what move I'm going to be judging, and that's basically how this hunter handled the rescue by batter. Um, so I'm going to let you pause if you need to. So brilliant or blunder, this one is going to be blunder because the batter is rescuing, which means they probably don't have tied, although you can't guaranteed that um, but that means the batter's job is just to try to keep distance and not really just farm the survivor and so if you can you could try to hit the survivor um, as soon as they get off chair and then make it difficult for batter to rescue uh, in this case the patroller was stopped completely by the batter which just means that um, a little bit of time was wasted and professor was able to get away And you can see here, here's the outcome. And again, remember that the outcome doesn't necessarily mean that the, the decision was brilliant or blunder, but this one just kind of proves my point. And they're able to get that heal off just because the, the leeches were in the right position. So here we are a little bit later in the game. Uh, Professor is still kiting and Brad is trying to keep him alive. So the move here we're going to be judging is the patroller and then the play after. Is this going to be brilliant or blunder? So this one's brilliant. Um, if you notice, after getting the presser down, there's only one leech left in that area and bombs is too far away. And that area has a lot of pallets. Um, batter probably has flywheel and a bunch of balls. So it's really difficult to try to get another hit on the batter. So really all you have to do is patroller and then safely chair the professor. Uh, and then you can just kind of ignore batter because you can't really do much after the professor is about to get chaired. Um, in this case, the dream which focused immediately on just getting another hit on the professor after the embalmer coffin, which is the correct play. Always remember that as a hunter, sometimes you just need a tunnel and focus on getting that first survivor eliminated. This next match is actually really interesting because it's a Sangria playing against us, Team Rival. And we're playing Arms Factory, and they're chasing a psychologist. <laughs> With that, they get the down. Now, was their chase, at least this part of it, Brilliant or Blunder? So the move I'm referring to is how the Sangria kind of waited at that pallet and didn't try to hit the Psychologist until the Psychologist's heal was completely done. Um, and because of that, Psychologist will not have any heal after they get off the chair. And this is kind of important because if they can get off the chair and take an extra hit, then it really increases their chance of rebounding and waiting the few seconds here is definitely worth it. 
So this next clip is just a short while after. It is on chair and the sangria is looking to defend the rescue. It's actually me rescuing as Merc. And again, focusing not on the technical aspect, but on the higher level decision making. Um, was this brilliant or a blunder? So it's going to be a blunder, not because they couldn't get the hit on the Merc, but because by chasing the Merc a little bit extra for a greedy hit, they let uh, the psychologist run to an entirely new area, Sandbags, which has many windows and pallets, allowing for a pretty easy rebound considering Sangria doesn't have Blink anymore. Okay, the Cypher Rush is crazy, and Cypher's just popped. Now people are running the gates, and Sangria is trying to kill the psychologist who is down chair. This one's very specific, so I'll just tell you the decision. It was to blink the psychologist for a faster down. Now, was that brilliant or blunder? It's going to be a blunder. The blink itself isn't necessarily bad because you have to blink in order to down the psychologist. But if you use trait and you decide to chair, the survivors know that they have enough time to open the gate and get out because you don't have any trait swap and you're going to go through the long chairing animation. So really, it's not necessarily the better play always, but if you don't have enough time to blink and then get to the gate, sometimes you just got to change target um, and leave the, the Ada to try to open the other gate. Because you can see here, due to the long chairing animation and no longer having trait, by the time that you get the survivor chaired, um, the other survivors will know that they can rush the gate and get out. The next match is going to be Nightwatch on Chinatown, and Little Girl is about to be rescued. So brilliant or blunder? This one's going to be a blunder. Um, I'm going to play it back in a second. But if you were paying close enough attention, Nightwatch gave a free rescue from standing too far, a little too far from the chair, and then Cheerleader was able to body block and let Little Girl get to a much stronger area. And as we're playing it back, make sure to watch how he uses his abilities. So he uses two charges and then ends up hitting cheerleader, which gives little girl a lot of distance and he no longer has any charges to dash back and catch up. Switching here to another short clip, um, Nightwatch is standing above basement and little girl is dying on chair. Brilliant or Blunder? This one's pretty easy. Um, Nightwatch was able to find where all the survivors were, or at least their rough location, know that they were decoding and not going for the rescue. So given that he didn't have tinnitus, he was able to quickly dash out of basement and get ready for the next chase, and looks like they had no chance uh, for healing. Skipping ahead a little bit to end game, they're trying to prime the cipher here, and Nightwatch is trying to get a no attack recovery, but gets stunned out, and they're able to pop, and everyone's up. Brilliant or blunder? So the decision we're looking at is who to chase, and looks like the Nightwatch here decided to chase the acrobat who's going toward this theater area. And if you notice, the other two survivors who were also close by were all running towards the same nearby gate. So by choosing the, at this acrobat, uh, it's really giving the other two survivors an easy job just opening that gate, instead of pressuring two survivors at once if you chase them to the other gate. This next match is an and match on Leo's, and first officer is going for the rescue. And successfully finds first officer and gets a cat on him. Here 
Here we're trying to judge how Anne tried to stop First Officer. Is this brilliant or blunder? This one's going to be um, a blunder, actually. I'm going to play it back here. But if you notice, given that this Anne has the warp trait, he could very easily stop the rescue by just warping to the chair. Instead, he tried to be a little bit greedy and keep the, the warp trait for later. But he totally didn't have to, because if you stop that rescue, you're in such a good winning position that it doesn't really matter if you have a warp or not. Skipping ahead, Anne just down the magician and sees Antiquarium running away, who just rescued. And Anne's going to go ahead and chain the magician. There's one cipher left. And here we go. This warp play. Brilliant or blunder? This one's brilliant. Shouldn't be too hard. Notices that Antiquarium is no longer around because he checked using tinnitus. And once he knows that Antiquarium is no longer around and you know, half health not likely to rescue, then it's a very good idea just to pressure with the warp. Even if uh, you don't find them and you go back, you're still in a winning position as long as your magician doesn't get sneak saved. So warp might be used here, um, but again, you're in such a strong winning position, there's only two survivors left, uh, and you're most likely going to get at least one, if not two, that it's just a good play in general. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching.